okay so in, in this video I will talk about five common presentation of five diseases okay so let's start with Paget disease of bone uh, Paget disease of bone has three stages first of all there is increased osteoclastic activity which causes excessive bone resorption followed by an increasing level of osteoblastic activity so first of all you have an osteoclastic phase then you have an osteoclastic plus osteoblastic phase ultimately the osteoclastic effect wear off and there is excessive osteoblastic activity only so first of all you have bone resorption next you have bone resorption plus formation at last you have excessive excessive bone formation so this is the basic story of the Paget disease so you have excessive osteoblastic and osteoclastic activity at different stages and ultimately the osteoblastic activity will cause enlargement of the bone and osteoclastic activity will cause dis disruption of the bone architecture causing bone pain and osteoblastic activity will lead to bone enlargement and this bone enlargement can occur especially in the tibia so there can be some swelling and also it can occur in case of uh, your cranial bones leading to impingement uh, leading to a uh, deafness and commonly in labs you will see a lot of ALP because ALP or alkaline phosphatase is a marker for osteoblastic activity and that's why the ALP will be raised next disease is aortic regurgitation so in case of aortic regurgitation the valve is regurgitant so the the in case of whenever the heart is in diastole the blood that heart has pumped into the aorta during systole now comes back during the diastole so this is aortic regurgitation and as the, the as the blood inside the aorta comes back to the heart the, there is a sudden drop of pressure, pressure in the uh, in the aorta and also in the systemic systemic arterial systemic arteries and that's why there is a raised pulse pressure so systolic pressure is very high and diastolic pressure is very low and this raised pulse pressure leads to for leads to a specific type of pulse known as bounding pulse and one of the severe manifestation of this bounding pulse is head bobbing because uh, your carotid arteries carry a lot of blood to your brain and if there is a high pulse pressure the systolic uh, systolic pressure is high and there is a rapid fall of the systolic pressure to diastolic pressure this rapid fall will cause head bobbing because there will be sudden a uh, sudden shift of blood volume in your head uh, and and this leads to head bobbing and you will have the diastolic heart murmur because the blood actually comes into the heart during the early diastole so the diastolic uh, decrescendo murmur actually occur in the early diastole so that's the most basic ideas about aortic regurgitation and commonly it occurs due to uh, aortic aneurysm due to any cause or uh, aortic valve uh, endocarditis okay next we have systemic lupus erythematosus so this is an autoimmune disease commonly occurs in women in their reproductive age and most commonly it presents with butterfly rash a, a, a butterfly rash or malar rash that spares the nasolabial fold and Raynaud phenomenon uh, due to uh, vasculitis in the small vessels of your hands and also in legs and whenever there is vasculitis there is decreased blood supply to your hands uh, leading to uh, formation of uh, uh, first of all there is pallor and then there is uh, bluishness um, and then ultimately there is erythema and whenever the vascular obstruction due to vasculitis is severe it can lead to formation of ulceration and in, in more severe cases gangrene formation okay so those are the most important uh, features of uh, SLE but those patients can also have photosensitive rash can also have arthritis which are non deforming and most importantly those patients have involvement of the kidney and the most commonly you have a diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis and there are other manifestations of an involvement of bone I mean especially involvement of bone marrow which leads which can lead to pancytopenia autoimmune hemolytic anemia involvement of heart involvement of lungs uh, in case of lungs you'll have pulmonary fibrosis pulmonary nodules and you can have pleural effusion and you can have pericarditis and even endocarditis known as uh, non thrombotic bacterial endocarditis uh, non bacterial thrombotic endocarditis okay next we have uh, neurofibromatosis type 1 
So uh, this is an important disease, which is an autosomal dominant disease, and you will develop neurofibromas in multiple areas of your body. And these neurofibromas can occur commonly in cutaneous tissues, uh, out of the uh, out of the nerves, nerve cells swan cell there so there are multiple uh, swanomas or cutaneous neurofibromas all over the body and the, 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 this this patient is actually started started with neurofibromas and neurofibromatosis is type 1 is commonly associated with other tumors like it can present along with pheochromocytoma and the patient also can have optic glioma and the most important uh, clinical features are cafeolate spot and the cathodic spots are uh, hyperpigmented areas in your skin, which are uh, large hyperpigmented areas. And you have leash nodules, which are actually uh, pigmented Irish hamartomas, so disorganized tissue in the Irish, which are uh, which looks like a nodule, uh, known as leash nodule. And then the most classic feature is cutaneous neurofibromas. And as I have mentioned already, that you have pheochromocytomas and optic gliomas as a uh, associated manifestation. Then the macroon albert syndrome or macroon albert syndrome, this, this occurs due to mediation of the G protein signaling system. And what, what happens is, in case of G protein signaling system, you have a G protein uh, which actually has three subunits, alpha, beta and gamma. But in case of macroon albert syndrome, there is an abnormal alpha subunit which is the active subunit of the G protein and which binds to GTP. And whenever this alpha subunit is mutated, the binding of GTP, there is excessive binding of GTP leading to excessive activity or activation of the GS protein which leads to <coughs> which leads to activation of the adrenal cyclase. And there is downstream signaling uh, leading to multiple, uh, multiple common uh, manifestations. One, one of them is cafeolate spots, which is also found in neurofibromatosis type 1. Another one is polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. So if you do an x-ray, you'll see there are some vacuum vacuums or small uh, spaces where there is no bones inside bones. So no bone inside bone. So fibrous dysplasia, the bones become dysplastic and they easily get fractured. And the patients also have uh, precocious puberty and there are multiple endocrine abnormalities due to defect in the signaling system because you know mo many of the hormones in our body use this G protein system especially the hormones from your thyroid gland uh, the hormones from sorry the hormones from your pituitary gland especially the anterior pituitary uh, no sorry th thyroid gland hormones act on actually uh, through nucleic acid receptor I'm wrong with that okay and next let's go to the muscular dystrophy and one of the most common muscular dystrophy is uh, Duchenne and there is a uh, frame ship mutation of uh, dystrophin, which is an important protein that connects your inter intracellular cytoskeletal structure with the extracellular matrix and which actually stabilizes or protects the muscle from shearing forces. And whenever you have this excellent mutation of this dystrophin gene and uh, now the dystrophin protein is absent or it's truncated, uh, what happens is the proteins gets gets easily injured so whenever you have a stretch or damage or overload in the protein uh, overload in the muscle cell the muscle cell will be damaged easily and now uh, the repair will uh, repair will lead to fibrosis or fibro fatty replacement of the muscle and this actually causes calf pseudo hypertrophy the calf looks bigger but if you if you fill them or if you bath them the big calf will not show any muscle rather it will show a lot of fibro fatty tissue instead of muscle okay next we have kawasaki disease okay i, I think I, I will talk it in a later video okay thanks all for watching my video